Welcome to the Cathedral of St. Mary at 25 8th Avenue South. The road that led to the Cathedral of St. Mary began with a fire. On a beautiful summer day in 1920, the old St. Mary's Church caught fire and burned to the ground in a fire so hot the tower bells melted and dripped down the steeple. The building was a total loss. In 1922, Father Luke Fink traveled to Rome and returned with plans to model the new St. Mary's Church after a 5th century basilica in Ravenna, Italy. His sketches were turned over to local architect Nairn Fisher. Although he later gained a national reputation, at the time Fisher was a young man having just opened his St. Cloud office in 1922 and anxious to test his hand at a major project. The design is in the Renaissance Revival style and laid out in a basilica plan. Note the square bell tower on the southwest corner. The repeated use of arched openings is also typical of the style. But how could the parish pay for it? Lacking funds, the parish finished the basement first and worshiped there for the next eight years. Finally, in 1931, and despite the Depression, the upper church was completed. But it was still not a cathedral. The bishop of a Catholic diocese selects one church as the home for the bishop's chair, or cathedra. The presence of his teaching chair makes this church a cathedral. In 1931, the cathedral of the diocese was Holy Angel's Church, but two years later, a fire severely damaged that building. Although the church was quickly repaired, it set off a controversy about where the cathedral would be located. Bishop Joseph Bush, who was impressed by the beauty of the new St. Mary's, requested it be designated as the cathedral. But both of the parishes rebelled. Holy Trinity would lose its prestige, while St. Mary's parishioners would lose the services of its Benedictine monks. Finally, after years of delicate negotiations, Bishop Bush transferred the cathedral to St. Mary's in 1937. In the early 1980s, the interior of St. Mary's Cathedral was renovated under the guidance of liturgical consultant Frank Kekmersik and the architectural firm of Hamel Green Abramson. Kamersik was considered a leader in liturgical reform after Vatican II. Indeed, one biographer said, no one has had a greater influence on the development of American religious architecture and art in the past four decades. Here, he used local granite for the new altar, lectern, and bishop's chair and created a stunning mosaic on the ceiling. I encourage you to step inside the cathedral to see for yourself. <music>